Your Excellency, President Trudeau, Secretary General Guterres, Your Excellencies, Heads of States, Your Excellencies, Heads of Governments, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Ministers, Honored Guests, Colleagues, and Dear Friends. It is indeed my pleasure to be back here in Nairobi and to have the opportunity to share with you my thoughts at this inaugural Africa Climate Summit where Africa is evidently championing a new vision for climate action. We're gathering here in Nairobi just three days before the UNFCCC releases the findings of the first global stock take. And let's just face it, we already know that the world is way off track and we know what this report will actually say and it will, what, what, what it will conclude. The world is losing the race to secure the goals of the Paris Agreement. And the world is struggling to keep 1.5 within reach. Collectively, we must admit that we are not delivering the results we need in the time we need them. We must also accept that business as usual is simply not working and that business as usual will not allow for a paradigm shift. We need a smart, pragmatic disruption. We need an integrated approach that delivers transformational progress and we need a plan that leaves no one behind. That is why I have been and I continue on calling on all parties to unite around a plan of action that is fully inclusive. A plan of action that fast tracks a just, responsible, orderly and well-managed energy transition a plan that will focus on people, lives, and livelihoods, and a plan that will finally fix climate finance. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa contributes just 3% of global emissions, yet we all know that it suffers some of the worst consequences. Droughts, floods, and failed harvests have exposed one-fifth of Africa's people to hunger, tripled the number of people displaced in the last three years, and is dragging down Africa's GDP growth by at least 5% every year. But there is also another narrative that unfortunately is overlooked and in a big way undermined and underestimated that needs to get out there and that is Africa is also a beacon of hope filled with potential and a global example of what pro-climate and nature positive development should and must look like. Ethiopia's Green Legacy Initiative is enhancing food security and stimulating green jobs across the Horn of Africa. The countries of the Congo Basin are protecting vital rainforests and helping preserve the world's natural carbon sinks. Kenya is closing on, on its goal of 100% clean energy by 2030. And the number of sub-Saharan countries in Africa with significant installed solar power has grown six times in the last five years. This great continent is rich and the resources that can help not just Africa, but the entire world transition to a zero carbon and high 
growth future. That said, we first need to deal with some realities and we must accept to come to terms with these facts. Almost half of Africa's population still have no access to electricity. Almost one billion people lack clean cooking fuels and this energy gap will only increase as Africa's population grows. These basic energy needs must be met and meeting them with low carbon, nature positive solutions will meet Africa's development and climate goals at the same time. And the key to making this happen is of course finance and finance and finance. This finance must be made available. This must be made accessible and this finance must be made affordable. According to the African Development Bank, 250 billion US dollars annually is required to meet Africa's climate finance needs. Africa only receives 12% of that amount and less than 2% of that is going to adaptation. We can all agree that this is neither just or equitable. We must agree that it is a big missed opportunity. The World Bank estimates that every dollar spent on climate adaptation brings an average of four dollars and benefits. It simply makes sense for Africa to get a fairer share of global climate finance. That is why I am calling on donor countries to close out the $100 billion pledge they made over a decade ago and to replenish the Green Climate Fund. I will continue to press on these issues. <clears throat> I am also calling on donors to double adaptation finance by 2025 and for all parties to transform the global goal on, that, on adapt adaptation from theory and text. are exploring and experiencing. What was promised in Sharm el Sheikh must be delivered in Dubai. We can no longer accept pledges and announcements without a clear roadmaps of implementation. Our financial architecture. In parallel, we need a we must upgrade, upgrade our financial architecture. We need a complete upgrade. In fact, we need a surgical intervention of the global financial architecture that was built for a completely different era. IFIs and MDBs must step up and they must up their game. They need to raise concessional capital and lower debt burdens. They need to attract and leverage private capital at a multiple and the multilateral, public and private sectors need to mesh together and work as true partners to accelerate the delivery of practical solutions and real impactful projects on the ground. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the United Arab Emirates has applied this model of genuine partnership to invest in clean energy projects in 70 countries around the world. We have always chosen to meet global challenges and sustainable development. <clears throat> that is why I am pleased to answer the call made by African leaders to seize the opportunity of green growth. And today, it is my true honor to announce a new initiative between the United Arab Emirates and Africa that aims to unlock 
Africa's capacity for sustainable prosperity. Your Excellencies, the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, Etihad Credit Insurance, Masdar, the Abu Dhabi Future Energy Company, and EMEA Power will join with Africa 50 as a strategic partner under the guidance of the UAE and African leadership to develop 15 gigawatt of clean power by 2030. Working together, we will deploy, and by working together, we will deploy 4.5 billion US dollars that will catalyze at least an additional 12.5 billion US dollars from multilateral public and private sources. It is our ambition that this will launch a new transformative partnership to jumpstart a pipeline of bankable clean energy projects in this very important continent. This initiative, <clears throat> this initiative will target countries with clear transition plans, robust regulatory frameworks, and a real commitment to putting the necessary grid infrastructure in place. It will clearly demonstrate the commercial case for clean energy investments across this very important continent. This initiative is designed to work with Africa and for Africa. It will act as a scalable model that can and should be replicated and it will support COP28's global goal of tripling renewable energy by 2030. And here, let me take the opportunity to thank His Excellency, the President of Kenya and his government and the African Union Commission and the EU Presidency for championing this goal alongside COP28. It's through their leadership that they are choosing a path that makes economic and climate sense at the same time. And let me extend an open invitation to all Africa's leaders to join us at COP28 to help mark a new ambitious era for Africa's sustainable growth. Ladies and gentlemen, as COP28 approaches, I am determined that it is a turning point that delivers for everyone, everywhere. We don't want to leave anyone behind. Climate change is a global fight and it demands a global solution. If Africa loses, we all lose. And if Africa succeeds, we all succeed. Progress for one is progress for all. Let's unite act and deliver to turn the rhetoric into real results that turn pledges into tangible projects on the ground and let's launch a new and optimistic future that puts the world on a climate positive pathway and offers an opportunity for all to prosper i thank you all and i look forward receiving you at COP28. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency.